Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for blessing us. Amen. Another Sunday. Amen. To come and to share the word of God and worship in the beauty of holiness. Amen. We welcome all. Amen. That are joining in by Facebook. Amen. And those that will be watching later on uh, uh, YouTube. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Amen. And we're just going to uh, go right ahead. We're going to move right along. Amen. And we want to say for those who be coming in, we're going to have communion. We'll be having it every first Sunday. So if you can get your um, elements prepared to end of this service, we'll be having communion. Now we want to say amen as Evangelist Turner comes and shares with us prayer and the reading of the scripture. Let's say amen for her. Praise the Lord, saints, and the peace and love to each of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your new mercies. God, we thank you for your manifold blessings that you have stored up for us this day. God, we just thank you for your people everywhere. God, we ask that you will bless each saint one by one, name by name, that you will strengthen us, Father God, that you would increase us in wisdom and knowledge, that you would take us deeper depths and higher heights in you, Father God. And Lord, we just ask that you would look on the sick and afflicted today. We ask that you would touch bodies from the crown of their heads, God, to the soles of the feet in the yes, name God. of Jesus. Let your healing virtue flow. God, we pray for Sister uh, LaShonda's family on this morning. God, we ask that you will bless and strengthen them. Lord, just bereave families everywhere, God. We ask that you will strengthen them, that you would uphold them in this time of sorrow. And God, we just pray right now, Lord God, that you would look on the president of this United States. God, those that are working alongside with him. God, we just ask for your mercy. Lord, you said the heart of the king is in your hand. Yes. And God, we're asking you to turn his heart, God, turn in the him, way God. that you would have it to go, Father God. We're Thank asking you. that you will work this, this situation out according to your will, according to your purpose, God. Oh, God, and that you would help us as believers, Father God, to look up to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that our help come from you, Lord God. And, Lord, we just commit this service today into your hand. We ask that you will send your word, God, that you will send it with power, yes, that you will send it with the anointing, that it would accomplish the thing that you send it to do. And, God, we pray that over every shepherd today that is preaching the truth and the power of your word, Lord God, that you would anoint them to do your work this day. God, all these blessings in the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And then we'll be reading your hearing from Psalms chapter 42, verses 1 through 4. And it reads, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, to the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. In Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for that prayer and scripture. Amen. And now we're going to um, prepare our heart for a um, song. Amen. He wishes you well. This from uh, Pastor Patrice McCullough's CD. Amen. Because truly God does wish us well. Amen. As the scripture said, I wish you all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So we just want to um, sit and take a listen and hope you will be blessed. He wishes you well.
God for his goodness and his mercy. We thank God for that song on today. Amen. We thank God for those who are here. Amen. And we thank God for those who are um, watching by Facebook. Amen. We just thank God for um, his continued blessing. And in the midst of it all, amen, we have the assurance that we are not alone. He said he promised to... Um, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, that he will be with us, and that he will preserve us, and that he will bring us out. So we thank God for that um, promise, that assurance that we have on today. Amen. And I'm just going to go ahead and read our confession of faith just to remind us. Amen. Uh, Romans 8:28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. That means no matter what you're going through, all things are working together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. And that's Isaiah 54 and 17. Amen. And so we praise God for that assurance. Amen. That no matter what we're going through, all things are working together for our good. Amen. So we praise God for his goodness. Amen. And we just thank God for the words that he's been giving us of late. Amen. Reminding us what time it is. Amen. It's time to awake out of sleep. Amen. And for our righteous, our salvation is nearer than when we believe. And so we just been... Um, going through um, the word and, and one of the things that we've been dealing with is the fact that we're in a time of rebuilding, amen, rebuilding the walls and rebuilding the temple, amen, and so we praise God for um, his word and so as we have promised we're going to start, amen, in the doctrine, doctrinal area Amen. And um, today we're going to be dealing with the Godhead explained. Amen. Because one of the um, uh, main things is that we understand who God is. Amen. And we're going to look at it from what he said about himself. Amen. He explains himself through his word. He gives us an understanding of who he is. And so that's what we're going to um, look at. We, we talked this lesson once before, but we never got it on Facebook. But God just put it on our heart. Amen. Since the Bible said in the beginning, God, we're going to start with the nature of God. Amen. And we'll see why as we get into it. Amen. One of my favorite subjects. Amen. And so I'm excited to uh, minister this lesson on today. Hopefully... For some of you, it will clear up some misunderstandings that we've had, amen. And for others, it will just confirm or affirm, amen, your belief, amen. So um, the first, first um, scripture we want to go to is actually Deuteronomy 29 and 29. It's just a few things we want to establish as we get into this lesson on today. Amen. This is the time for us to be firmly planted in the things of God, in the word of God. It's, as one scripture said, this is the time to make your calling and your election sure. Yes. Amen. Because as we teach, and the Bible teaches us that it's uh, Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Amen. That the, the way that the um, gate is straight and narrow, and few there be that enter therein. Amen. And, and we know the only way in is through Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Through the word of God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let's look what this scripture said. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. It says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Why? That we may do all the words of this law. That we may do all. You always hear those, um, that little word, it carries such weight. Because we're in a time when um, it seems like people want to do what they want to do. Amen. They want to add to the word, take from the word. Amen. But I still hear the scripture telling the prophet to eat the whole roll. And we got to eat the whole roll. Amen. And the way we um, teach here is um, line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, in order to get the big picture. You can never establish a doctrine on one scripture or one part of the scripture. Amen. As I say sometimes, you have to have the Spirit of God to help you to connect the dots. Amen. Amen. But the secret things belong to God. But the things that he has revealed through his word belong to us. It's a part of our inheritance, a part that the enemy don't want us to seize upon, don't want us to lay hold to. But I... I I submit to you, as I always do, the word of God is the most important thing in this whole world. Because it was in the beginning and it's going to be in the end. The only thing that's going to survive the fire that's coming, the judgment that's coming upon this world, is the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So if we establish ourselves firmly in the word, we don't have to worry, amen, about being lost. Amen. The fire won't be able to burn us up because the word is in us. It just purifies us. Amen. We thank God for the purifying effect of the fire that it has on us. And so that's so important that we get that revelation. So we're going to see what God has revealed about himself. As we said, we're going to be um, teaching different doctrines, just relaying the foundation and reestablishing these different doctrines and, and just looking at what the Bible says because so much has been added and other things have been taken from the word. Amen. But what I like to do is just see what God said. Amen. I'm not against theologians or whatever, but too often the theologians don't know the God that they are trying to teach. And this is what the Bible talks about. It said, them that handle the law, God said, they don't know me. Amen. Amen. And so we want to make sure we know him because the only way to understand the word of God is by revelation. Amen. I believe it was Bishop um, Patterson used to say all the time, it's not by observation. Is by revelation. If God don't reveal himself to you, you can't know him. Yes. The Bible said no man knows who the father is except the son, and no man knows who the son is except the father, and to who he to whom the son will reveal himself. Yes. So, and so we have to understand too how, how um, awesome it is, the fact that God has chosen to reveal himself to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because everybody don't have that. And, and so Jesus said again, while you have the light, walk in the light, lest darkness come upon you. Amen. And so we thank God for the light. And we are endeavoring by the grace of God to walk in the light. So we're going to see what God has revealed to us about himself in the scripture. Another scripture I want to read as a, um, a laying a foundation for what we're going to deal with is Job chapter 11. Um, verses 1 through 9. Job chapter 11, verses, um, I'm sorry, 7 through 9. And Job, 11, Job 11, 11, chapters, um, verses 7 through 9. Amen. Yes. And you might want to, this is one of them real teaching lessons where you can take down the scriptures and go back and study later. 
Amen. Because I, I, I'm, I'm one of those that believe like Paul. I believe you ought to be a Berean. Amen. And the Bereans, the Bible said, were more noble than they at Thessalonica. Thessalonica, when Paul preached, they just tried to kill him. <laughs> but the ones in Berean, when he preached, they were more noble, the Bible said, in that they heard what Paul was teaching, they received it, but then they went and searched the scriptures daily yes. to see if those things were so. Amen. And I encourage you to search the scriptures to see if those things, the things that I'm going to share with you are so. Amen. Okay, Job 11, um, verse 7. Can if thou by searching find out God or understand God? Can if thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What can if thou do deeper than hell? What can if thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. And, and the um, part I want to lift up, it says, can if thou by searching find out God? See, you can't study books and discover God. Bishop Mason, something happened to him that was so profound that uh, I, I learned in his history that stuck with me. He went to a seminary. Mm -hmm. He was studying in the Baptist seminary to um, find out God. Mm -hmm. But he said himself, his testimony was, he didn't find God at that seminary. He didn't find holiness at that seminary. Yeah. So he left the seminary yeah. in order to seek God through prayer and a study of his word. Yeah. And we know, the rest is history, we know he found God. Yeah. Amen. And he found holiness, he found righteousness, he found truth. Amen. And so we can't by searching books. Amen. Because sometimes we think, well, we'll get this um, uh, commentary and that commentary. And I'm not uh, against commentaries necessarily, but all the commentary is is a man's comments on the Bible. It's not law. Amen. And so and it could be wrong or it could be right. And you got so many different commentaries. Amen. I saw one preacher, he was preaching on a certain subject, and he said that uh, he wanted to look up some commentary and see what other pop people had said about it. And he looked at two or three different commentaries, and he didn't like what none of them said. So he got his own interpretation. So now we got four different um, thoughts on what one scripture said. And see, and that's, that's the problem when we try to reduce God to a science. Yeah. Amen. We need his spirit Amen. in order to reveal his word. See, the spirit of God is what wrote the book. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so it takes the spirit of God to reveal, to open up our understanding. Amen. The Bible says, who knows the things of a man save the spirit of man that's in him? Even so, knoweth no man the things of God except for the spirit of God that's in him. Amen. And so, I'm just admitting to you, I'm not, I didn't search a bunch of um, commentaries to get the revelation that I'm going to reveal to you today, but I did it the old-fashioned way, the way Bishop Mason said, through prayer, and a study of the book. And, and, and God began to connect the dots. Amen. And, and, and that's why, that's how we've come to this conclusion. And so we're going to get into this, but I wanted to lay that groundwork, amen, to help us know that the things that are in the Bible is the things that God has revealed. I, I'm not going to go outside of the 66. See, because... <laughs> Everything he wanted you to know about him is in the 66 books. I know they have some that like to read the Apocrypha and, and uh, all these other books. Um, but I, well, I'm just going to say what my experience, maybe they had a different experience, but when I was trying to read, what is that book? Enoch. Enoch, the book of Enoch. I listened to it, the whole book. And, and I see contradictions yeah. in what the Bible says and what the book of Enoch says. Yeah. 
And, and so that right there let me know that I can't be dealing with right. that. Because anything that contradicts yes. uh -huh. this King James Bible, yes. I can't trust. There you go. And everything I need to know, uh -huh. see, because a lot of stuff that we get from some of these other books, we really don't need to know because it ain't really the truth. Yeah. If if it if God wanted us to know it, I believe uh -huh. this is my belief uh -huh. that He would put it in here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I believe what He wants us to know as it pertains to salvation, and there's some things we will never know. I always share this. We 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 we're gonna move forward because I believe we're gonna go pretty quick today. Amen. But uh, there are only two people that I know, and I can confirm in the Bible, that know something that is not in these 66 books, and that's Paul and John. Because Paul said one time he was caught up into the third heaven, and he heard words that it is not lawful for men to speak, because God said to him, don't speak them in the earth. Amen. And so he never spoke, but he went to his grave with that knowledge that he never revealed to us because God told him not to. John, the Bible said, when the seven thunders uttered their voice, he was about to write. And then the Holy Ghost said, don't write it. Don't write it. So he knew something. And Paul knew something. Mm -hmm. But I believe everything God wanted us to know is in the book. Yeah. Amen. So let's dive into this. Amen. And again, the Godhead explained. And the Godhead is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. That's what makes up the Godhead. And we know they are different understandings of it, but we want to get what God has to say about himself. Uh, okay, so the first question we're going to answer is, who is God? Who is God? Who does the Bible say that God is? Who does God say that he is? And for that answer, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And we're going to begin at the first verse, but we're going to uh, just as some background. But our real focal verse is going to be uh, verse 6. Okay, look what it says. Now, it's touching things offered into idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity or love edifies. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Amen. That's why I want to make sure I love him. I, I mean, I thank God for knowledge. I mean, because knowledge helps us to understand God, but love is what causes us to be like God. His love shed abroad in our hearts. Amen. And so we, and love is what tempers knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important that we get full of the love of God and not just not get a head full of knowledge. Now, sometimes you get your head so full of knowledge, your head gets so big, you start toppling over. But love will keep you grounded. Look at verse 4. As concerning, therefore, the, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. An idol is nothing. An idol is vanity. It's just a piece of wood. It's a piece of gold. It's a piece of stone. But it's nothing in the world, and that there is only one God, the Bible said, none of the God but what? One. one. He says, I'm the first God, and I'm the what? Last God. Verse 5, for though there be that are called gods, mm -hmm. little g's, uh -huh. only one big g, 
I like to say it this way, you know, the young folk got this, they call you OG, and, you know, and I, from what I understand, that means a, a original gangster. Help me out, young folk, if I'm wrong, because I was wrong. I called myself trying to keep up the young folk language, and I said, it, young lady, I said it to you, she said, no, that ain't what it means. <laughs> it means original gangster. It means, and so we know they call them OG, and young G or whatever, but I don't care how you cut it, God is always first, because he's the original OG. Amen. The only God, or the original God, that's, that's who we are dealing with. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but you see, both have little g and little l. Amen. Okay, because they're not really God by nature. Okay. They're man-made. They're demons. That's what the Bible teaches. But look at verse 6. Because this right here, really to me, I was talking to Deacon Persons. I said, this is a mic drop right here. Because we could really stop right here. Well, watch what it says. I mean, because this is so clear. And, and, and can I say this? Because sometimes what happens when men try to figure out God by searching him out. Um, hermeneutics, the science of biblical interpretation. When men try to figure him out, what they end up is creating confusion. Because they begin to use terms that the Bible don't even use and it creates confusion. We're going to use biblical terms to explain God as he has explained himself. Okay, so he says, but unto us there is but what? One God. Who is the one God? The Father. It says it that clear. The one God is the Father. I know what, what it said, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. But here's my problem with that. That term will never be found in the Bible. It's never there. Because it always refers to God as the Father. It refers to the Word or the Son as the Word of God. It refers to the Spirit as the Spirit of God. And we're going to understand this better. Right? But the one God is who? The Father. I want to show you something before we, we, we go on with that because there are several passages and, and what I want to go to is, I'm just going to look at a few of them. It's all through uh, the Bible, but I just want to look at a few of the salutations mm -hmm. that are used and we're going to see that this is common. Um, so let's go to, let's see here. Uh, first Corinthians, first chapter. And we're going to lift up that third verse. It says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And let's look at First Corinthians chapter one and three. Yeah, we're gonna be going through these quick. Second Corinthians chapter one, and we're gonna start at the first verse. These are the salutations, but they, they, they say the same thing. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and to Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 3. Blessed be the God, even the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. See, and so we see that. I'm just reading a few of them. 
But we see that in most of the salutations of the apostles. And the thing that we have to understand too is we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Not the apostles and the theologians. The apostles and the prophets. That's where we get our doctrine from. Look, look at, look at uh, Galatians. Um, one and one. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. See, it, it, it's, it's, it, it goes on and on. We're going to look at maybe one or two more. Uh, Ephesians. One, again at verse one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to, let me see something here. Philippians, Colossians, but we said, well, all of those are are, are Paul. So let's look at what Peter had to say. First Peter. First chapter and verse 3. Well, let's start in 1 Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, and elect according to the foreknowledge of God, what? The Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience, sprinkling the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see throughout their salutations, and it goes on and on, they recognize that God, the one God, is the Father. Okay. And we're going to, because I can hear Somebody possibly saying, are you saying that Jesus is not God? Are you saying that the Holy Ghost is not God? Walk with me. Amen. I'm not saying that at all. I acknowledge, remember what we said, we're talking about explaining the Godhead. Yeah. And the Godhead consists of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So we're going to walk this thing out through the scripture. We're going to show you why Jesus is God. We're going to show you why the Holy Ghost is God. But there's only one person. Let me, let me put that in there. Because I know you say, well, there are three persons, three separate and distinct persons. That ain't what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches there's only one person in the Godhead. And we're going to see that. Amen. Okay, we're going to see that. And so, um, this this is important. You know, because there's so much division yes, in the church over things that we shouldn't even be divided over. Right. Things that could be settled. You know, they really could if they wanted to settle a lot of this stuff that's going on in Congress now. If they really would seek God, he would lead them and guide them into all truth. But they, they choose to be divided in order to divide us because they want to conquer. Yes. See? But I'm trying to help us to understand. God doesn't give, give us all that we need to make us one. And ain't that what he wants? Right. Jesus' prayer for the church is that we might be what? One. one as the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are one. Yes. So that the enemy can't come in and do what? Divide us. There's no, there is no reason for there to be so many denominations that are. And I don't have a problem with denominations. Let me let me put that in there. I don't have a problem with denominations. I have a problem with division amongst us who are truly in God. And I want to make this perfectly clear. If you believe. And, and, and if that's how you explain it, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying any of that. I'm trying to help us to see what the Bible says. Because through the Holy Ghost, God wants to bring us together. 
He's told me that you are a part of everybody that's a part of the body. I don't look at denominations. The only thing I need to know is, do we believe the same thing according to this word? That's what it's really all about. Amen. I don't look at white church, black church. It's just the church. Because in Christ, all of these all of these barriers that we set up, in Christ, they are torn down. Yes, Non-denomination and all. No, we just find that in the Bible. We just the what? The, the church. The body of Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But let's look at verse 6 again. We back in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. We're going to go through verse 6 again because we're going to make it all make sense. But we had to establish that this is what they taught, that the one God is the Father. Now watch this because you, you're going to have to catch this. Okay. But unto us, verse 6, there is but one God, you know, because all these other gods and lords, they're false gods. The Bible says that um, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, is the god of this world, but he's not God by nature. Okay. He's not God by nature. Amen. And that's why, <laughs> and, and I'm going to teach you on this too, that's why you have, he has to do all of these artificial things to make him appear to be like God. You notice how they got all the cameras everywhere? Why? You know what he's trying to do? See, God is all seeing. Mm -hmm. The devil, he is limited. Yes. But when he got cameras everywhere, <laughs> when he got spies everywhere, oh, see, see, because he want to be uh -huh. like God. God knows everything. Why? Because he's everywhere. But the devil just want to be like God. And so that's why we are experiencing all these things. And a lot of things that we're going to learn as we continue to go forward in God that the devil has planned is going to help us understand why we need to know this book. Okay. But to, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. I want you to underline that word in your mind. Of whom? Right. Because we know that that little word right there means simply that um, out of or from, by, away from. That's what it is. Out of. So everything that is comes from the Father. Mm -hmm. That includes the Son and the Spirit. If there was no Father, there would be no Word of the Father or Spirit of the Father. Right. They do not exist apart one from another. Right. So you have to see what he's saying here. This is so profound if you get it. All things are of God the Father. Mm -hmm. Comes from him. In the beginning, God created. How did he create? By his word. So watch, watch what it says about Jesus Christ. So there's one God, the Father, of whom, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, watch this, by whom mm -hmm. are all things, and we by him. Yeah. Is it beginning to make sense? All things are of God, but how did God create all things? By Christ or by his word. See, okay. That's how he could. Not, the Bible said that in the beginning was the word. The word was what? With God. And the word was God. It was God because the word of God is of necessity the same essence of God. It's how God reveals himself to man. But it's the word of. It came forth of him. He spake and it was done. He commanded. And the word that goes forth out of his mouth did what? Created everything he said. 
But that wasn't another person right. from him. That was a part of his person. The creative part of God is his word or Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't break it down. So, all things are of God the Father, but they are by Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who is the Lord. Amen. Now look at verse 7. We're just going to touch on this a little bit. Just show us how special we are. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. For some, with conscience of the idol, until this hour eat it as a thing offered unto idols, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Because everybody don't know that there's only one God. Mm -hmm. See, there's a whole bunch of gods, little Jesus, yeah. and people worship. I mean, the black man think he's God. Yeah. I had a, a, a truck driver on my job, and I'm a mailman, and uh, he used to come to deliver mail. He had a t-shirt on. He said that he, he was God. And so we was discussing and I was saying, I said, do something. If you got, show me. Do something. There you go. <laughs> and he came up with some silliness mm -hmm. that didn't even make no sense. I ain't going to even repeat. He was just vile. <laughs> but he couldn't do nothing. And that's what God did to the idols. He said, if you got, do something mm -hmm. to show you God. Yeah. See? You say you got to do something. If you go, if you God, do something. So they did. They couldn't do. Can I say one thing to that? What you just said. No, we. Yeah, this is not about to say. That's okay. All right, we can talk about it later. Okay. Amen. So you have to get the revelation. The one God is here, the Father, by whom are all things, because everything comes from him mm -hmm. and everything goes back to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at another scripture. Amen. And we're we're probably just we may just do the Father today and uh, the Son and the Holy Ghost. We just want you to see and how they all tie together. How they are all one. Okay, let's look at um, Colossians 2 and 2. Let's look at Colossians 2. We're going to start at verse 1, however. Colossians 2, verse 1. Our focal verse is going to be uh, verse 2, though. Amen. And in Paul's days, this was so important because um, there were so many idols. And, and, and Paul had to try to turn the people from the idols to the true and the living God. And it's the same today. We've got idols everywhere. We just don't often recognize them for what they are. So we still have that same challenge. Amen. But we've got to know who the true and the living God is. Is. It says um, verse 2, I mean chapter 2, verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, watch this, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together, how? In love. That's what we're trying to teach here being knit together. God knit our hearts together. See, because when, when, when your hearts are knit together in love, the enemy can't just come in and divide you. Amen. And something that I saw, a vision God gave me years ago, and it was a piece, it was like it was a knitted garment or something like that, and it had one little piece sticking out. And it was a hand that was reaching for that one little thread. And the, and the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said that thread represented what? Love. Because you know if something is knit together, 
If you get the right thread, you can unravel it. Right. See, and that's what's happening in church. It is an unraveling because what? The love. Uh -huh. That's what he's after. Because if we love one another, see, as long as me and my wife love each other, the enemy can't separate us. Amen. But if he can get me to stop loving her or her to stop loving me, mm -hmm. it's all she wrote. <laughs> then you start looking for what? A way out. Right. <laughs> Other people can steal your heart. Amen. And that's why he, he gives us two laws upon which the ten stand. And that is to love God and to love your neighbor how? as yourself. And so, look at what he says again, verse uh, Colossians 2, that their hearts might be knit, be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all riches and of the full assurance of what? Understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. The mystery. And what a mystery is, I found this interesting. A mystery is um, a secret or mystery through the idea of silence imposed by initiation into a religious rite. Something is said, hidden thing, secret, mystery. You remember what the Bible said, what we read earlier? The secret things belong to who? God. But the things that are revealed belong to us. Yeah. See, in the Old Testament, God hid mysteries. Mm -hmm. He hid the mystery of the fact that one day the Jews and the Gentiles would be one. It's there in the Old Testament, but it's hid. Mm -hmm. But in the New Testament, is what? It's revealed. See, because we have been what? Initiated. Amen. Everybody don't have it. The Bible said, in every man is not this. We just read it. Okay. okay. So, God wants us to understand the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ. And one of the greatest mysteries is how they are one. Three, yet one. See, I believe in the triune God, mm -hmm. what I don't believe, because I can't explain it, is a trinity of persons. But I do believe in the trinity. I believe that, and we're going to see it as we go along, that the one God is not just one thing. Mm -hmm. He's Father, He's Word, and He's yes, Spirit. Spirit. Yes. And it's the that triune that makes him who he is, just like we won't see this. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But we want to understand this mystery. Verse 3 says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Where are they hid? In Christ Jesus. In the word of God. And it's for us. The Bible says it is God's privilege, I believe. I forget the word they exactly use. It is the um, privilege of God, something like this, to hide a thing. But the honor of a king is to search it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. That's what we are, king. Yes. So we searching out what God hid. Right. And then God said, if you search, then I'm going to what? Reveal it to you. Yes. Amen. You can't find it of yourself. But if I see you looking for it, it reminds me of something I did to my, my um, KK when she was a baby. We was in Texas, and what I would do, and it might seem a little cruel, but I was just, you know, we was kidding. But, but uh, we was in this little, little bitty apartment, and so you had the living room, and then you had our room in the kitchen, and that was it. And so what I would do is, at night, a time or two, I turned out the light in the living room. And then I went in the living room and called KK. She was in the bedroom. And when she come running in there looking for me, I'm here. And she looking in the dark. 
and she can't see me. And she go back in the room and I call her and then she come running and she can't see me. And so what, what made me reveal myself is when I saw her start to cry. Oh. <laughs> huh? When she started to cry, I said, here I am, baby, and I'm right here. And then she was so happy. Well, what were you saying? See, sometimes God, called, just like he called Samuel, he wants to reveal himself to yeah. us. But he has to seek us, have to seek us wanting to find him. Yeah. When he see you seeking, oh, he might tolerate it a little bit, but he can't stand when his children start to cry. Then he what? He reveals himself. That's just a sign. But all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, everything we need to know about God is in his word. Amen. Now let's go back to uh, Let's go to John, 1 John. We're talking about the Father today. Amen. Look at uh, 1 John, the fifth chapter. We're going to spend a little time here. 1 John, chapter 5. And, and here's one thing that I want us to be able to do here at the house. And, and I, I, I tell this to speaking persons often. But I don't want us to be parrots. I don't want you all to just be parroting what I say. Just repeating what I say without understanding why I say it. Because you need to be able to explain this to somebody else when you are challenged. You need to be able to say, well, this is why I believe this. And then be able to show them in the scripture. Amen. So let's look at 1 John um, chapter 1. Let's start at the first verse. It says, that which was, wait a minute, no, 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 no. 1 John chapter 5. I'm sorry. Chapter 5, we're going to start the first verse. He said, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, and the Christ simply means the anointed one, is born of God. And who do we say God is? The Father. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Now watch this. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. See, you know how you know you love God? Because you love his offspring. And most of you know I'm telling the truth. If somebody don't like you, they don't like your children. Not for real. Amen. Say it. They might be 10. Right. But when they see your children, they see who? You. That's an issue. Huh? Oh, God. Amen. And so this is what he's saying. How we know we love God is when we love his son. His word. Yeah. When we love one another. Yeah. How can you say you love God who you've never seen, but you can't stand your brother who you see on the regular? We got to get that truth right. That ain't, that ain't true. Amen. And we're we going to have to grow in love to the place where we can be real with each other. Because it's too much fakery and you can never truly love without truth. You know, I heard somebody say that uh, uh, love, you know, they talk about without truth is harlotry. Mm -hmm. You know, because you talk about the, the, the prostitute. They talk about making love, but that ain't there's no truth there because the only reason you are supposed to be um, um, having sex with somebody is because you are married to that person. See what I'm saying? So there's no real truth there. So there cannot be what? 
love. We got to get the revelation because if you don't love me and I'm a child of God, but you say you love God, the Bible just said you ain't telling the truth. And love, and the old folks just said this way, love is as love what does. Love is an action word. And, and that's what we have, that's why I always take us back to where? Corinthians chapter 13. You want to know if you love him? Go and read Corinthians chapter 13. The characteristics of love. And just know if you want to know if you hate him, flip it. Because the characteristics of love, hate is just the opposite. So look what he said. Verse 2 again, by this we know we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments because his commandments is that we what? Love one another. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Amen. Amen. We got to stop saying we love God but we ain't obeying him. You're lying. You ain't telling the truth. And the more you love God the more obedient you're going to become. Amen. Because sometimes we love, I love God with all my heart, but we don't obey. Right. That can't be the truth, according to the book. Secret things belong to God. Things that are revealed belong to us. Why? So we can keep his commandments. So we can be saved. Ain't no need hanging around the church your whole life and still dying going to hell. That don't even make good sense to me. Hello. Especially when it's all in the book. That's why we're going back and looking at the doctrines. We got to make sure we save. Like I say sometimes, I promise you, what time I don't want to obey the word of God, I'm going to obey. Y'all going to know I ain't saved. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to have that wonder. You, you gonna, I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing. But if I'm going to be saved, I'm going to be saved. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to be baptized in Jesus' name. And I'm going to walk in righteousness. Right. So look what he says in verse 4. For whosoever, whatsoever is born of God, or whosoever is born of God, does what? Overcometh the world. Overcomes the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Gets the victory over. Gets the victory over this old nasty flesh. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Yes. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is what? The Son of yes. God. Not God the Son. Mm -hmm. Didn't say that. And, and, and I challenge anybody mm -hmm. to show me one place where it says that. And I will repent and teach differently. Because every place I've seen is always the son of God. I ain't never seen God the son except in right. theological right. circles. Yeah. In creeds. Your creed got to line up with this So who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. He came forth from where? God. Just like I'm my father's son because I came out of his loins. Okay. Verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. Yes. Jesus said that he was the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. But he said the Holy Ghost is the spirit, here it is again, of truth. Yes. Look at verse 7. For there are three mm -hmm. that bear record in heaven. The Father, mm -hmm. the Word, and what? The Holy Ghost. And these three 
are one. one. They're not three separate and distinct persons. They are one person. They are three parts of one person. Now watch what it says in verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, uh -huh. the spirit and the water and the blood uh -huh. and these three what? Agree. Agree. In one. In one. Now we say the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost agree in one. But the book said they are, but these three agree. And if, the, if God meant to say they agree, he could have said it because he said that the Spirit, the blood, and the water agree. Right, right. So he could have said it up there. But that would have been wrong. Why? Because the three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, are one. They are one. One God. The Father. Who is God? The Father. We just didn't start. Boy, I love this. Come on, man. I love to teach this. Because this, it, it is so powerful. And like I said, I'm not condemning anybody that believes in, in the Trinity. And, um, and I'm not saying you're going to hell. That, I don't think that's a... Um, salvational right. situation but I just believe once God reveals something to me I'm going to hold to it yeah. and I'm going to teach it and I'm going to teach others because it's what God has revealed and he revealed it this way for a reason and I submit to you one of the reasons is that we might be what as they are so, let me read that verse 7 again. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The three that bear record in heaven. They're one. Okay. The three that bear record in earth the spirit, the water, and the blood, these three agree in one. Uh -huh. Because without the spirit, the water, and the blood, you can't be saved. Right. You got to be baptized of the water and of the spirit. You got to be washed in the blood. The Bible said almost all things are purified high by blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's why we can never stop preaching the blood. Yes. Amen. Robert Shuler, that hypocrite, he wanted to try to get rid of the blood. He said it's offensive. Jesus. What I say to such nonsense is what Jesus said, blessed is he that is not offended. We preach Jesus Christ crucified. That's a bloody death. But it took that blood to cleanse us from our sin. Man. So this is why we got to preach the truth in this house. Right. There's a lot of stuff out there that needs to be challenged. Mm -hmm. So that the people of God can come into a true knowledge for things of God. We're going to finish the Father today. Then we're going to. Let's look at um, 1 Timothy, the third chapter, 15 verse. Got a couple of more scriptures, and then we're going we're gonna to shed it now. Now, as we talk about 1 first, first Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15, as we talk about the different um, parts of the, uh, the Godhead, there's going to be some overlapping. But we want to um, bring it all together in the end. So let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 and 15 through 16. But who is, the, who is God? The Father. the Father. 
Look at it. It says, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery. Mm -hmm. Remember the mystery of the Father? Mm -hmm. And of, of, of God and of the Father and of Christ? Great is the mystery of godliness. God was what? And who are we talking about? Are we talking? We said God is the Father, right? Mm -hmm. So God the Father was manifest in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. Yeah. He was seen of angels, yeah. priests unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Thank you, Jesus. How did God the Father accomplish that? Yeah. Through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Second Corinthians, I'm gonna prove it to you right here. Second Corinthians five. And there's so many, because when I began to pray, because the enemy was trying to get me, when, when I first came into the knowledge of this truth, he was trying to just overthrow my mind and get me to throw up my hands mm -hmm. and go back in the world. But I told God, I said, God, you got to help me. You got to open up my understanding. And he's opened up my understanding. And this is just what well, these scriptures that we're dealing with is bare minimum. Uh -huh. There are so many that I can yeah. take you to. But I believe these, if, if you would just um, be able to receive from these, that you would get a better understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 16 through 19. It says, uh, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. See, that's why I don't get all caught up in the black Israelite movement and stuff, because I don't know Christ after the flesh. Because the, the Christ that is being revealed in um, Revelation chapter 1 is not the one that walked on this earth. He's not in that form. It's the same Christ, but he's in his what? Glorified. When John saw him in chapter 1 of Revelation, he was in his glorified body. Now, I do want to say, do I believe that he was a person of color? Yes. He was definitely a person of color. I believe all of them were people of color. All of this coming out now, you could be in that region and not be a person of color. Adam was a person of color. Uh -huh. I mean, have ever seen just some white dirt? Uh -huh. But the point I'm making here is I'm not getting caught up in the flesh. Amen. Because my flesh going to be changed. Your flesh going to be changed yeah. in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we're going to be like him. Yeah. And so the thing that is being revealed in Revelation chapter 1 is not the texture of his hair, right. but the color his hair was white like wool, as white as snow. It didn't say it was nappy. It didn't say that. I don't really care whether it was nappy or not. It don't really matter. I'm just, I'm just glad the blood saved me. That's what I'm, that's what I'm glad about. Come <laughs> on. Amen. Because now we don't know him after the flesh. Watch what Paul's, Paul is saying. Henceforth, no, we know man. And see, this is another thing I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm, and, and the Lord is bringing me to this place. Because folk can fool you in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. The flesh is a lie. Yeah. We got so many chameleons in the church. Church full of wolves. In what? Sheep clothes. But here's how you really know a person. Not by the flesh. Uh -huh. Oh, the spirit. Yeah, yeah. I want to know what spirit I'm getting. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't get yeah. nothing about the flesh. Uh -huh. I, I want to know what, Lord, what spirit am I dealing with? Yeah. And I'm going to deal with you according to what? Your spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what Paul is saying. Yeah. And we need to do this because if we're going to have a church that's ready for the Lord when he comes, it's going to have to be spiritual. Yes. 
And we just let folk come in because they look the part. Mm -hmm. No, no, we got to get our spirit right. right. So he said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Mm -hmm. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him what? We don't know him after the flesh no more. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows what he looked like when he walked on this earth in right. the flesh. Yeah. We know what he looks like in his glorified body. Mm -hmm. But the glorified body was a what? Spiritual body. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away, not the flesh, but the old thing the spirit. And when your spirit get right, it's going to correct mm -hmm. the um, fallacies in your flesh. Right. See, when your spirit get right, the things you used to do in the flesh, you don't do them no more. I still preach over you. Amen. I still preach. I believe like this. This is what I really believe. Come as you are, but don't expect to stay that way. Come on. Not here. Amen. You got to, you, when you come to Christ, you come oh, to be yes. made a new creature. Yes. There has to be a change. I thank God for change. I was a mess. But God, but God. And so that's what we have to preach. Because if we don't, what's going to happen is people are not going to really get it. So when we come to Christ, we come repenting. We come changing. Saying, Lord, everything in me that's not like you. Because our spirit, your flesh might look the same, uh -huh. but your spirit got to change. Right. And as your spirit changes, it's going to change how your flesh acts. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. So we can get ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. So let me read that again and say, Therefore, henceforth know we know man. We 2 Corinthians, I'm about done, so um, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we know man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more after the flesh. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are what? Passed away. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, passed away. Behold, some things. All things. Just want to make sure y'all go. Behold, all things are become new. new. And we talked about perfection. We ain't through with that. Yet. I mean, these last Tuesday and Friday, I just couldn't get off work. And I've been wanting to get off so I can finish teaching on perfection because we need to get the revelation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that when you first get saved that you can run around, you can run in the spirit. And no, no, no. But you become a new creature. That's why we talked about the first stage of perfection is completeness. You are born of the spirit. So now you can grow into a mature saint of God. But you're going to have to do something to grow. And so he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all Amen. things have become new. And watch this now. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. How? By Jesus Christ. Of God, but it's by Christ. He created all things in the beginning by Christ. And when sin came in and messed everything up, he turned right around, took that same word, and did what? Reconciled all things back to himself. Everything he does, he does it yeah. by his word. Yeah. That's why the devil hates the word of God. Yeah. Okay? And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Here it is. What we were talking about in Timothy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Okay, what is the ministry of reconciliation? Look what he said. To win or to explain that God was where? In Christ. The Father 
was in Christ. Doing what? Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So the Father, God the Father, he was in Christ. Jesus even talks about the Father that dwells where? In me. He does the work. And so, who is God? He's the Father. Amen. He's the Father. And study these scriptures and you'll see. Amen. Next week, we're going to talk about who is Jesus. And we're going to talk about him as the word of the Father. And we may be able to Get to the Holy Ghost. I've got a lot of scriptures on Christ, though, so we might not. But, and then um, we're going to talk about the name, because that's the thing that is the enemy makes controversial. It's really not controversial. If you will get in the Bible, use the Holy Ghost that has been given to you to instruct you in the things of God. He will bring, what did the Bible say? When he comes, he will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. Amen. Because he's the only one that knows the Father, the one that knows the Son. So he's given to us for that. Amen. I hope you've gotten something out of this on today. And we're going to continue next week. We're going to deal with the Son. Amen who is uh, the word as far as the, um, the Godhead is concerned. Amen. We're going to ask Deacon, uh, would you get the communion for those that will be taking it here? Amen. And while he's doing that, um, we want you to get your communion. And we will be taking communion every first Sunday. Amen. I forgot. I meant to remind us uh, Saturday night but I forgot so hopefully everybody was ready for it but uh, does everybody have that's going to take it okay. amen alright amen and we thank God for you thank God for um Edward being oh, with yeah. us on today. Amen. Amen. He said he was waiting for us to get back so he could come. Yes. <laughs> Thank God for Sister um, Yolanda and um, her children being with us on today. Amen. Amen. And as it was said, we're praying for Sister Lashonda had another death in her family. We want to remember them. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, as we pray that Take, we're going to read our epistle in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse um, 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep.
Amen. I'm going to have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now for this time of fellowshipping with you, your body, and your blood. We thank you for the bloodshed and your body broken for us. We pray you will search our hearts, search our minds, anything in us that's not of you, that you would purge us of it. Lord God, that we might be worthy of your body, of fellowshipping with you. We pray in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for those who may not be able to take it this time, but we pray for salvation, Lord God, that they may be able to take it the next time. Lord God, we pray for people everywhere to be saved, to turn unto you, oh God, according to the purpose and reason that you came into this earth. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. For I deliver unto you that which also I received that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had um, given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. We thank God for you on today.